We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon the red record button is red, which means we're recording yet another exciting episode of the Shock Marathons podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Charlie Roxburgh. Hello. And Tom Scalzo. Hey. We're discussing Halloween 4. We're skipping right, right, <laughs> right to the good stuff with this one. Halloween 4. Uh, and should, should we note that that this is actually the first Halloween movie that we covered in the Shock Marathons. We, yeah. We're not just skipping around in terms of our re-reviews of them. Yeah, right. I mean, we never watched the first three. I, did we right. watch the third one in a marathon even or no? No. No. Right. So that's why we're going straight to four. But and also, these were both in Shock December. Yes. All, but we're also doing it because it's great. It opens up yeah. Opens up with a – well, I guess it's, oh, it's up for debate. We'll see. I – I have a soft spot in my heart for this movie. Opening credits, um, we see some like desolate, empty farm in the evening. Nice and creepy. Although, frankly, I don't know. I don't know what that has to do with anything. <laughs> Is that just near the asylum? I don't know. <laughs> it's. I think someone went out and said, "We need some creepy Halloween footage. Get it done." Yes. That's what. <laughs> that's what we got. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it definitely dawned on me early. I was like, "Wait a second. That's not <laughs> part of the movie. It's just a, no. a place. No. Just, just a random scary place." Uh, so then we're in an ambulance that's driving through the rain. It arrives at the sanitarium where Michael Myers lives, and they're gonna transfer him to Smith's Grove. Um, they go in and um, and they get talked to by the guy who works there. And let's listen to what the guy says. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with this place. Come on. Yeah, this is where society dumps its worst nightmares. Yeah, the one you're picking up, just thinking about him. He gives me the willies. A decade ago, Halloween night, he murdered 16 people, maybe more, trying to get to his sister. Nearly got it, too. But his doctor, of all people, shot him six times. Then he set him on fire. Both of them nearly burned to death. Yeah, I'll be glad to see this one gone. Yes, indeedy. So it's a little over the top, um, but I, I guess yeah. I'm, I guess I'm okay with it, Tom. <laughs> well, I mean, it's you know, if if you're actually watching, if you were watching this when it first came out, you might need a little refresher as to because Halloween three didn't have Michael Myers, you know, and you, you need it's been a while. Maybe you got to reset the scene a little bit. There's multiple scenes in this movie at the beginning that are just like backstory, you know. Yeah. They just they hit you with it. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's fine. I don't I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's fun and cheesy fun. We're gonna get into how um how unsecure and how you know unsafe this transfer is, right? And how seemingly um uncredentialed these people are for that level of security. That's yeah, and they, demanded it, here because he just says, "Here's the most dangerous guy like in the world. Let's yeah. go, just wheel him out." This lady and this guy yeah. who look yeah. like the clerks or something on the night before <laughs> um, the anniversary of his uh, killings, too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be g- glad that this guy's gone. And it's like, well, is no policeman there? And <laughs> I know com- compare with the assault from Precinct 13, which also ended badly, but they at least tried. Well, you know right. who else isn't there is Doctor Loomis. This is all going on behind his back, it seems, right. or at least, or or he's just not answering his memos. But uh, in the ambulance, um, the man and the lady discuss how Myers had a niece. So at this point, Myers is in the 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 ambulance with them, and mm-hmm. he's he's happily in a in a you know vegetative state. But then he hears 
through his vegetative state, he hears that he has a niece. And then his, he, his hand moves a little bit. This, this stirs him from his rest because now he has something to do. His, his only job in life is to kill anyone in his family. So he wakes up. He grabs the man's head, rams into the wall, and then pushes his fingers his finger through the guy's forehead. So. That's like a new wrinkle in this movie. Like, let me let me crush your your face. <laughs> and I like just crunch you. Like, I don't have a knife, but I have a thumb. He's very strong. He's very strong, very strong man. So now we're in Haddonfield with Jamie, a frightened seven year old who can't sleep at four a.m. Rachel, her teenage stepsister, tries to help her. Jamie asks if Rachel loves her like a real sister. And Rachel says, well, we're not real sisters, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> so, not the right answer. <laughs> Ra- <laughs> Rachel I feel like they did that down. for extra backstory. Yeah. Yeah. But they could have they could have done it another way. They, I mean, she didn't need to say that. If she if the girl is asking the question, that tells us enough that they're not exactly by the book. Sisters. Yeah, we get it. We get it. Uh, Jamie is the daughter, it turns out, of Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis's character from Halloween 1 and 2. Laurie's dead, um, and we get to watch as poor Jamie cries while looking at an old picture of her mom. And then, and then Michael Myers shows up and, uh, attacks her, but oh, it's only in her mind. And, um, you know. I, I'm not a fan of dream, of dream sequences. It's just so, so so cheap, Charlie. Nor am I. And uh, it's you know there there's no cues in this one. Even though cues can be hitting you over the head, at least they're clear. It's this is just like confusing. You know, it, 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 her dream world is absolutely no different from what was happening a few minutes you know, a few minutes before. Everything looks exactly the same. It's not heightened at all, except at the moment where Myers is in two places at once. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right, Tom? And Yeah, and, and I feel like there, there's a lot, a lot of the times that they devote to these kind of dream sequences, it could have been devoted to more, like, lighthearted character development, which is kind of lacking in this movie. I think because of that, it's like it's kind of like relentless from from minute one because mm. of the dream sequences. Even if it's not really happening yet, there's no like buildup of like normal life yet. Great point, Tom. There's no there's not enough levity. There's some, and I, I like yeah. I like where I am. But you're right. It does it does it wants to cram in as many frightening moments as it can from start to finish, and, and rather right. than than kind of giving us a little up and down. Right. So, um, yeah, Charlie. Just, just real quick, that this is kind of the first instance of very much Hollywood kid actor feeling too. Um, I, I like this movie. Don't get me wrong, but when she's em- <laughs> when she's emoting by the rainy window, it's a little over the top, oh, and it's yeah. a little bit like here's the here's a aspiring kid actor doing his or her thing, yeah. and uh, that's yeah. that's not always the best in a in a horror movie, in mm-hmm. a shock movie. So the uh, the babysitter broke her ankle ice skating. I think is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, turns out Rachel's gonna have to watch Jamie on Halloween night, and she's not happy about this because she has a date scheduled with Brady. And uh, let's listen to a little bit of that drama. I think tonight Brady was ready to make a commitment. But now my future relationship, my engagement, my marriage, my children, and your grandchildren have all been wiped out because I have to babysit. Oh, joy. I'm sorry I ruined everything. I wasn't here. You can go out. Oh. Good job, Rachel. That little girl needs all the love we can give her right now. All you can do is think about yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little bit much. Rachel is so up and down in her and like she's she's really good and loving with uh Jamie and then she's totally mean with her, like with no uh rhyme or reason it seems, Tom. Yeah, she's she's kinda of, I feel like the 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 true nature of a character kinda of comes out later where she is more kind of loving, but I feel like they kind of like crafted this kind of mean stepsister angle on just to make some tension where it wasn't really organic to the story at all. 
Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. It 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 isn't it doesn't feel natural the um no. the roller coaster of emotions coming out of Rachel Charlie. And, and and this is a really funny busy American morning in the kitchen. Dad's tag was in the coffee and then the phone's ringing and it's like it's like everything is going on. It's like a Calgon commercial or like your mom needs a trip to the spa, you know, some kind of like hotel or club med commercial. There's so much going on in that two minutes. Babysitter cancels, you know, yeah. t- teenage daughter, grief, grief, giving her grief. It's nice. Yeah. Um, Rachel tries to smooth things over with Jamie by promising uh, double scoops of ice cream after school, and it's successful, so that's good. Meanwhile, Loomis finds out what happened with Myers, and he is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God for Donald Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen. Best actor nominee. Best actor nominee oh, in our uh, Shock December. Let's listen to him uh, talking with the guy. The the phone call comes in. While Loomis is yelling at his colleague, the call comes in that there was an accident with the ambulance carrying carrying Myers. Let's listen. Why well, wasn't I notified? About what? You know damn well about what. You let them take it out of here. For Christ's sake, spare me the speech. I've listened to it for a decade. The fact is that Michael Myers was a federal patient and a federal prisoner. Therefore, he is subject to federal law. We're not talking about any ordinary prisoner, Hoffman. We are talking about evil on two legs. <laughs> I can see this is useless. Do you know what today is? Do you know the date? Every day I look at myself in the mirror, and, and every day I remember. Look at me, Hoffman. Take a good look. I don't want anyone to have to live through that night again. Uh, I've said this before. I think you're the one who needs mental help. All right. Heavy stuff <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah Ple- Pleasant has scars from the end of Halloween Part 2, uh, where the explosion happened, by the way. That's what he was pointing to. So, um, yeah, Charlie. It's funny when the guy says, "I don't. Want, I've been listening to this speech for a decade." We we could be like, "Yeah, we heard it in the first movie when they walked out <laughs> out of the the place and they're on the steps and he's by the car. He's like, you can't transfer my prisoner.' It's the same <laughs> thing. It's oh, pretty yeah. much this. It's pretty much the same thing. You don't know how dangerous he is, and you know, <laughs> Ple- Pleasant has one job in life, and it's just to keep Myers from killing. He does, he's not that yeah. good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he doesn't learn. Like he you know, he's like, Well, yeah, we we, we shot him a bunch of times, like, I'm gonna shoot him again and assume he's dead, you know, or <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Pleasant uh Loomis gets to the accident scene with that that doctor. Loomis can feel that Myers was there. <laughs> There's a lot of like psychic connection between Loomis and Myers and between Jamie and Myers. Um so you won't find you won't find him. He's done all this. Now he's escaped, uh Loomis explains. So, um he announces that he's going to go to Haddonfield to uh you know, to do <laughs> to do what he does. And let's uh, I'm gonna pause it for ten seconds so I can line up the audio. Hang on. Now where are you going? Haddonfield. It's a four-hour drive. You can reach me through the local police. If you don't find him in four hours, I'm sure I will. Oh yeah, Pleasant's gonna go do what he does. That's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> what what a what a great actor, huh? That Donald Pleasance. He didn't win. Oh, yeah. Charlie, he didn't win Best Actor. He, he lost to Herb Robbins from Worm Eaters, <laughs> which <Well. laughs> some Pleasance fans might be cross with us about that. But <laughs> it happened. Now we see a mechanic in the middle of a desolate road. Moments later, he's killed by Michael. Uh, then Loomis arrives at the service station. While Michael's still there, Loomis wanders into the garage looking for someone. The dead mechanic falls from the ceiling, attached mm-hmm. to some chains. Loomis then finds a dead worker in the restaurant. In the, the first of what turns out to be multiple uh, deaths that happen off camera. Most notably, 
<laughs> the entire police force. <laughs> Interesting choice uh, there. I'm, I'm not saying that I necessarily want to see more killings, but this is something, Charlie, huh? Yeah, it's almost confusing to the point that it's almost confusing. But actually, and the whole ambulance crashes off camera, too. As we see it, right, he's just mm-hmm. killing killing that guy, crushing his head. Then we just assume, all right, he yeah. killed everyone else, somehow got control of the vehicle, staged a whole crash, or he just made them, or he just crashed and walked away because he's invincible. I don't know. But one of those two things happen. Yeah, it's really, uh, really, like, I wonder, were these things filmed and then they just cut it down? Or did they, ju- or, or what? What do you think, Tom? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very strange because they do put a ton of effort into, like creating this mood of all these like fake scares and all these, yeah. you know, like dream sequences. But then they're, they're actually pretty light on the the actual Michael attack scenes. Yeah, it's like I don't I don't know if that's a choice or yeah maybe they just couldn't get it right. It's like drop the fake the dream murders and and show the actual murders. <laughs> that's a yeah. weird weird decision, weird decision. So mm-hmm. that that happens. Because um, compared with like a lot of the Friday the Thirteenth, you know, later sequels, like as the as the that series progressed, there's definitely less story, but there was just kind of like a killing spree, you know, and you you pretty much see everything. Yeah. That Jason does. This is really weird. And here in the diner too, I just wanted to say, do you guys get the feeling? I'm a little bit annoyed sometimes when Michael can almost like teleport. Yeah, yeah, I hate it. So, so he, he's pointing the gun at him when he's behind the counter. Usually, in a scene like this, you have a distraction that makes would make Loomis turn his head, and then he would look back with the gun and try to like fire. Like the wait, a waitress would would be still alive and say, "Help me!" And he would turn and look back. Myers would gone. They're staring at each other. He pulls the trigger. He pulls the trigger. Boom, boom, boom. They just cut to. He's gone. Myers is gone. There, there wasn't any cutaway. There was no time for him to leave. Yeah. Uh, that almost made point. me think: Is that a dream sequence? For for a second, I, I was wondering, or did he have a hallucination of it? But but no. No, it's just Michael is yeah. magic. And look, the more magic a killer is, the less scary the killer is. Am I right? right? Oh, definitely. <sighs> and then also, the more you feel, why try doing anything? If nothing can stop like, him, yeah. Why lock the doors? Why try to shoot him? Don't even bother calling the police. Don't, yeah, there's nothing. So, yeah, they have that, that showdown where where um, where Michael vanishes. Then he drives off in a big tow truck. He runs over a gas tank on the way, which then explodes. Loomis's car explodes. Just total chaos. <laughs> like, and action, action movie Donald Pleasance. Oh, yeah, he's diving <laughs> into the garbage cans. I think at this age he reached his, his height of action abilities because there's a st- stuntman flying over some, like, 55-gallon drums in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> Me- meanwhile, back at school, poor Jamie's being taunted by her classmates. Uh, they're saying your uncle's the boogeyman. Jamie is an orphan, and uh, a little, uh, a little unbelievable. I don't, I don't know what bullying is like in general, but I don't know. No, no one, no kid's that cruel. Charlie, I, I hope not. I agree with you. It's very specific too. They have a lot of knowledge about her. It's like, a, it's like a choreographed most painful in the world taunt yeah in, yeah. in like 30 seconds you know and, and a uh, good way for them to get more explication out you know that yeah yeah you know jamie's an orphan all that junk all right so then jamie leans up against a tree telling herself you're okay you're okay which is more you love this a- this young actress don't you charlie <laughs> demo they were her, her whoever was her managers or whatever like demo reel <laughs> with this this scene right here Tears by the tree. Yep. So then Rachel shows up with Lindsay, and Jamie says she wants to go trick or treating. And um, great news, we're gonna listen to the conversation in the car between uh between these three. You remember Lindsay, don't you? Hi, Jamie. Yeah, hi. You ready for some ice cream? I want to go trick or treating, like the other kids. But I thought you didn't want to go trick or treating. You know, Rach, Discount Mart's having a sale on Halloween costumes. 
No, Brady's working there till six o'clock today. I know. Don't you want to talk to him? I don't want to look pushy. You won't look pushy. Well, I don't want to come on too strong. A guy hates a girl that comes on too strong. Fragile egos and all of that. You won't come on too strong. <sighs> well, I don't want to seem desperate or anything. Face it, Rach, you are desperate. I love that. Guys don't like a girl who uh, comes on too strong. You know, fragile egos and all of that. That's like a line from Sorority House Massacre. Or it should be. Oh, uh, yeah. This was great. This was when That's we started stuff, getting into yeah. the stuff Tom likes. A little le- We all like a little levity, uh, you yeah. know, some broad statements about stuff like that. And I want to ask you guys, is that the girl from, I didn't research this, but is that the girl who was hanging out with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis when she was babysitting the boy? Remember, he said, she said, oh, you can hang out with little Lindsay. Or oh, one of that... the girls is babysitting a Lindsay. Oh, wow. And, they... I, and then she has dark hair, just like that girl. Yeah. In, in 1978, uh, if she's like eight years old, now she would be like later. 18. Exactly. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, because they do do that. And then, in fact, they have Tommy come back in uh, part six, I'm pretty sure. Interesting. And Tommy was the boy who's being babysat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we should look into that. That's a darn good question. Mm. Uh, so yeah, this is fun. And even though Rachel is really up and down, I, I, I kind of like her. I like her. And, um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the little girl, but I mean, she's not as annoying in this one as, as she gets to be in part five, at least. <laughs> no, and, I mean, compared to other Faint little praise. kids in horror movies, she's really not that bad. Right. No. Nah. Exactly. But still, uh, we, you know. We're looking for we're looking for our main characters to be, to be you know fifteen to twenty five years old is what we're looking for, mm-hmm. I think. Anyway, um, so they're gonna go to the discount mart where Brady works, and um, this is fun stuff because at the at discount mart, Brady bets one of his his buddy Wade that he can't go ask out the sheriff's daughter. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Tom. Sorry, before you get to that, like when you can when they. To an establishing shot of this place, it's not called a discount mart. Did you did you notice that? Yes. Oh <laughs> I yeah. I could true. only I like, think I like that. I could only think that like it's just called the discount mart around town because it's got good could discounts. <laughs> Low, lowercase discount could be. mart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry to interrupt. No, but I definitely <laughs> noticed that. It's a good point. So yeah, Brady bets Wade he can't go ask out the sheriff's daughter. They they put some money on the table. Wade walks up to her and she shoots him down before he can even ask. And that's some great comedy. Um, then uh, guys, did you notice this? Then the shot of the discount mart or whatever the place is called. Did you notice in the foreground the hook from the tow truck that Michael Myers stole? It was. It's kind of a subtle little um, hint to the viewer that that he's he's parked right out front there. Do you guys notice, Tom? I did see that. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice touch. You too, Charlie. Yeah, I liked it. It was yeah. good. Yeah. Nice little touch. Nice little touch. So uh, Jamie's looking at costumes while Rachel breaks the news that she can't go out with Brady tonight. He is mad. He, in fact, <laughs> he, he glances over at the sheriff's daughter, thinking to himself, eh. Maybe we'll go out with her instead. This guy, Brady, he, what a jerk, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Jamie has some, you know, because they're part of the same family, I guess. She's got a psychic link with Michael, and uh, which I'm never, I'm never a fan of psychic links in these horror movies, and 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 it seems the sequels, the more sequels you have, the more apt you are to to get into that territory, you know, to the point. Yeah. You know, where Friday the 13th Part 7 has, like, uh, a Carrie-esque character. Right, Tom? I, I think so. I don't remember that one. Charlie? <laughs> it's been a while. Well, you're right about the... It, it happens in Sorority House, right? One of the later ones where there's all that... that that's the whole movie is psychic link stuff. Yeah, it's bad. Like, another a, a quote I heard recently uh, doesn't quite apply, but... Is horror like the difference between hi- sci-fi and horror? Is that sci-fi tries to explain things to you, whereas horror is just is. And um, mm. I, I think a good, a, 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 a another way of saying that is a, a difference between a good movie, a good horror movie, and a bad horror movie is how much they try to explain um, why things are as they are. I, I think. Yeah. Anyway. The more time they take to try to explain things, you're losing it. You're and losing the audience. Right, and it's often in the sequels that they feel c- obliged to do that. In fact, the first Halloween makes no reference to Michael being Laurie's brother, right, Charlie? 
Uh, I don't know about that one. That's a good question. I can't say for, for sure, but I, you're totally right. And of course, that's what Hitchcock said about the birds, right? I mean, he's like, we're just going to have these birds. That's more of a suspense movie, maybe, but the birds are just attacking. We're not going to say, oh, this happened to the birds. And that's why like, they show right. a toxic waste thing spilling, and then like, man has created evil birds. Yeah. And, you know, it's, yeah, we don't need it's more it. Fun. It's a waste of mm. time. Look, birds are just attacking. The end. A crazy man is just attacking. The end. Yeah. So anyway, Jamie's got a psychic connection to Michael, and she picks out the exact same outfit that he wore uh, when he murdered uh, his sister when he was a kid. Yeah, Charlie. I almost wanted this movie to be a little more dumbed down for me, where mm -hmm. when there's a psychic thing happening, I wanted a... This is a little sci-fi, but like a... Or like something, because... <laughs> I just felt like multiple times it just made left me confused. And I, I was thinking, oh, that's too much of a coincidence. Or it's not filmed in such a way that I feel sort of magic is happening. I just felt like, oh, it's just happening. And that's unbelievably coincidental and convenient. It took mm. me a minute to real to recognize, uh, more than a minute to try to figure out if it was, in fact, the same outfit, too. But uh, so anyway, that happens. Jamie has another episode where she freaks out and, and she breaks some stuff. Meanwhile, Loomis is on the side of the road trying to get a ride to Haddonfield since his car yeah. exploded. And there's some cheerleaders and a guy in a car. They, they pull over and he's pumped to go get a ride. And then they drive off, leave it in a, in a cloud of dust. But then this uh, religion. Not very nice. I know. I wish he had gone with them. That's a whole nother movie to see. Like him in the yeah. back and them just going. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand the evil? <laughs> 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 so much more fun. Inst instead, a religious maniac picks him up in his pickup truck. And uh, <laughs> Reverend, the Reverend uh, can sense that Loomis is on a similar quest. They're both hunting evil. So anyway, it's Halloween night. Mom and Dad are heading out for an important dinner. Turns out, guys, that if things go well, Dad is going to get a promotion. Oh, yeah. This oh. is the difference, guys. This is the difference between a vacation in Bermuda and two weeks at Grandma's in Cleveland. So this dinner had better, <laughs> better go well, huh, Tom? <laughs> Uh, I know Grandma in Cleveland's like, come on, don't don't have a good meeting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I never get to see I the love, kids. I love seeing oh, you guys. Poor the Grandma. Vague, oh, the vague promotion talk. In, in oh, the yeah. it, it, it's like Tommy has in the room. You know, oh, I didn't get I didn't get my promotion. You know that it's just like so it's so vague. Yeah, but for me. <laughs> Ill researched and vague. And, uh, <laughs> Jamie and Rachel go trick or treating. Michael is in the house alone. He sorts through the photos <laughs> of Laurie before identifying yeah. Jamie. <laughs> Tom. This, this, what? If he, he's like, like supernatural teleporter <laughs> mind reader, and he doesn't know who she is. <laughs> no. It, this makes no sense. He's got to go find a photo. Like I'm sure she lives in this house, but I don't know what <laughs> yeah, she looks. Yeah. Like. How does he even know that's the house to go to? That's. That, right. that was the proof. He just need. <laughs> Not only does he need to, he doesn't even to go to the house. Need to go to the house because she's not there at that moment. Just go to where she is. Do yeah, your psychedelic. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps off camera, he went to like three hundred <laughs> other houses and sorted through the photos there too, before he finally <laughs> made the. That would be good outtakes. Him sitting on the curb, just head in his hands, like where is she? <laughs> <laughs> That's the movie uh, I want to see. <laughs> Loomis arrives at the police station. He's looking for the sheriff that he worked with 10 years ago. He's told by an officer that that sheriff retired and moved 3,000 miles south to St. Petersburg, Florida, which uh, I actually I looked it up. Illinois to Florida is 1,000 miles, so I don't know. <laughs> You'd think that someone would have uh, spoken up ab about yeah. that. that. I mean, that is way off common knowledge kind of stuff you know it's not even everyone knows that it's just a in a passing comment yeah yeah wow that, that's weird that they got through so loomis re reports um to the new sheriff that michael myers is in town and uh let's hear him rant a little bit why 10 years ago he tried to kill laurie strode now he wants her daughter 
Are you talking about Jamie Lloyd? Wherever she is, that little child is in mortal danger. Myers has been locked up since before she was born. He's never laid eyes on her. Six bodies, Sheriff! That's what I've seen between here and Ridgemont! A filling station in flames! I tell you, Michael Myers is here, in this town! He's here to kill that little girl and anybody who gets in his way. And I only now realize how much Tom's performance in Slingshot Cops is influenced by Donald Pleasance. <laughs> My oh, goodness, yeah, Tom. good point. Yeah. Did, were you, oh, it, was, it was kind jelly. of unconscious, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's always part of you. <laughs> it's always there. It's always <laughs> absolutely there. Um, I think a filling station in flames is a good album title also. <laughs> Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> he, he doesn't have time to give like the full story. He just like like a vague like poem almost, you know. <laughs> a filling station in flames. Just hit the high Six point. bodies. <laughs> so they want to call but, this. Oh, Tom. Uh, I'm sorry. This kind of like this gets to the whole point of like part of the fun of these kind of movies is having the local law like not believing you, you know. Yeah. That. And it, it like that's where you want it to go, and it you know again it it takes a turn in a different direction. It just, it keeps the focus on like the hunt like so you know intensely that you yeah. don't have a chance to step back and have any fun. Yeah, it's a double edged sword because I do like the the vibe from start to finish, and it you know it doesn't meander too much, and I like that it's pretty focused in in that way. But you're right, a little meandering is is part of the fun too. That and we definitely don't get. Uh, quite enough. Yeah, it's almost refreshing a little bit here that he doesn't have to beat around the bush too much, and he gets someone listening to him. You know, in a way, it's refreshing. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. So they want to call the state police, but they uh, they can't get long distance because the lines are down. Um, wait, is this okay? Besides, are we to believe that Michael? Not only did Michael potentially go through every home in town rifling through pictures until he found the right ones. Did he also disable long distance communications, Charlie? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know that. I mean, we're going to get into the utilities with the power <laughs> in a bit. But I, I, I think that there are at least two, hopefully four times, they call them the state boys in this movie. The state police yeah. are the state boys. And I thought, yes, that's also something subconsciously that I taken in and whenever i hear anyone talk about the police i'm like please say the state boys and we used it in freaky farley i think right i'm gonna call in the state boys nice. it's great yeah i love yeah. that stuff we don't need the national the governor and his army to uh to come to town for anything other than apple call, <laughs> call in the state boys so um i think i honestly think it's implied that michael is responsible for the phone problems it was i reading it into be. it tom no, I, I, I wondered that. I don't know that they provided any evidence for that, well, but there, I wondered that too. There were phone, there were uh, telephone poles that went down in the big um, crash, you know, uh, um, at the filling station. So there's that. But I also think off camera, Michael <laughs> is he's just a whiz. He is a total whiz. He yeah. knows exactly what he buttons is. to push. It, for for someone who's been, you know, <laughs> incarcerated and unconscious the majority of his life yeah. he is very sharp he is very sharp <laughs> he, he, he's a great driver he's very good at taking out uh electricity and, yeah. and you know other things and it's amazing <laughs> while trick or treating rachel is intermittently annoyed by jamie and nice to her in an inconsistent way which i already mentioned but that was in my notes rachel sees that brady is hanging out with the sheriff's daughter when they go trick or treating Drama, Brady. Yeah, and, and the girl's pantsless, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she or is. they're they're incredibly short shorts. And she's wearing a T-shirt that says um, "Police do it by the book," something like that. Um, Oops. Anyway, uh, while Rachel's involved in this drama, she loses Jamie, which is uh, which is upsetting. Charlie, this is like the first time of about three times in this movie where Jamie's protector inexplicably and <laughs> it just teleports away from her. I mean, there's a minor talk that she has with Brady, a few sentences, and all yeah. of a sudden the girl is like the other side of town. And not only the 
just a few streets away, but like in another deserted town. We were just <laughs> in a town where there's a bunch of people and kids trick or treating. It's just like, all right, now she's in the junkyard. Yeah. Like on the other side of town. A minute walk from this nice suburban neighborhood is just desolation. It's unbelievable. Um, meanwhile, we get to meet some new characters. 49, uh, not 49 minutes, but quite a few minutes into the movie here. We're, we're looking at like about 40 minutes in. We, we go to the local bar. And um and these guys are great and let's listen to what's happening in there. A damn minute. Shut up. All businesses are asked to close as soon as possible. All that shit about Stay tuned her. to the station for updates. I mean, like old Ben Meeker do something like that. Sure ain't. Martians could land on Ben's doorstep while he'd do his spit once and get himself a shotgun. Who are you calling? Police station. Yeah. They're closing down without a good goddamn reason. Well, Just rings. Well, come on. Jackie, watch the register for me, hon. You got it, Earl. It's going down. Where are we going, Earl? We're going to bed. Phone never just rings at a police station. No way. No how. Wake up for sheriff. Phone never just rings at a police station. No way, no how. Uh, I like this militia. Is this is a good, just when you need, just what you need yeah. at that moment. You kind of need a militia to to appear, right, Charlie? Yeah, and and they're non, uh, uh, you know, they're non serious. I don't take them as threatening or or hurtful. They're just like boobs and like yeah. you know, just some hicks. Well, and they're just yeah. out to do their thing. And I know they're dangerous. Tim, Hall, Tim Hollister may think otherwise. I'm just saying. <laughs> But they're so they're so, you know, just like burly and not looking like they're professional actors. Yeah, that I like fun. it. It's very fun. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, it's a, nice, it's a nice change of pace a little bit too from the relentless yes Michael stalking stuff. Yes. It really it really helps. It does big time. Just just the environment of the bars are just like different colors, you know, because it, mm. it's so mm-hmm. much the same yeah. um, stylized night color, uh, Tom. Yeah, you're right exactly about that and just the change of, of view. And, and before, I forgot to mention it, but when the trick-or-treating started, there was a nice three or four second shot of like the town square with like the kids like throwing toilet paper and stuff. Yeah. And that was kind of nice too. I, I wish there was more of that. It was just a nice like, like breath of of air for a minute. Yeah, it was it opened things up a little bit. Absolutely. It was nice. Yep. yep. It, everything, like you said, every, everything's so stylized that they thought they were making it look kind of glossy by having it be sort of blue. And every room will have like the little like perfect window shadow right. and light in the background. It it has that that late eighties to early nineties um time when they were like we got to look a little more expensive because that's what the distributors are are demanding so they, they might not really had a choice but it can mm. wear on you after a whole movie where you're like okay nothing is natural there's nothing in here that just like breathes and looks like a normal yard yeah you know yeah. it's it's definitely on the bad side bad side of that but it's not nearly as far on the bad side as, of that as a lot of other movies get i think like it's still, oh, no, no. it still has some kind of natural feel to it, um, you know, more so than something like uh, "Hello, Mary Lou" prom night, too. Yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. No, you're right. Loomis yeah. and the sheriff enter Jamie's house. It's empty, but Loomis sees the pictures, and he sees a dead dog, which uh, is is proof positive that Michael's been there. Um, meanwhile. At the town power station, <laughs> Michael is spotted by an employee who chastises him a bit for being where he's not supposed to be, and Michael th- then throws the guy into a transformer, <coughs> which cuts off power to the whole town. Not, not. I mean, what what is going on, Charlie? Well, the confrontation there is hilarious. He says, uh, I'm on the phone to the police right now. Don't you even think about moving to this huge, <laughs> scary guy with a mask who's standing right away from him, super threatening. And uh, it, it's a really funny scene. It's it's so sort of um, a real big Hollywood movie probably wouldn't have something this 
this convenient and sort of zany. It's like, well, we want to have it dark for the rest of the movie. So send send Michael to the power station and have him knock out the town, yeah. you know, and we'll get a bonus killing. And it's it's easier on the eyes and potentially more scary when it's not dark the whole movie, though. I, I that does that bugs me. It's like it doesn't have to be. Every scene does not have to be maximum scary. In mm-hmm. fact, you're no lo- you can't be if you're scared constantly then you're not scared at all, sort of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You get yeah. yeah, you get immune to it. I do like though that they the the sheriff like had that announcement. That there was the, the one positive thing of the sheriff believing Loomis that he got everybody off the street. That that kind of helped in, in some ways have some explanation why the streets were so empty and it makes it kind of creepy. Yeah. Cuz sometimes that like in Halloween one, there's really no reason why the streets are so right like empty, but this yeah. is kind of at least they have a reason for it. Yeah, That's and true. it's and- like this town's been through it. They know, like it's only yeah. ten years since it actually happened there, so it's good that they have you know they, they have a a Michael Myers alert system in place. Until <laughs> until you played that clip back again, I forgot that that was why the militia sort of started and why they got mad. It was because they didn't want to close down. Right. Right. <laughs> That's great. I just I thought that they were just like, oh, let's go get Myers. I forgot about that. But no, then it was like, so we, I'm not. We don't I need a go good home. reason. <laughs> I need a good reason to close down. Oh, awesome. So now Rachel's chasing, looking for Jamie. Uh, we get POV shots that make us feel like Michael's stalking them from like every direction. But wasn't he just at the power station, or or are these the POV of the guys who are dressed like Michael? Or is it just the movie playing tricks on us? It's all—all all of these are potential answers, and uh, and it's kind of playing tricks. It's kind of cheating, cheating in the same way that uh, the dream sequences are cheating. But we'll let it go. Um, so Rachel's running away from what she thinks is Michael, and we don't even know if it if if it is or not. But she runs over a fence. Jamie's also wandering about, frightened. Luckily, they find each other a moment later. Loomis and the sheriff find them and bring them into the car. Loomis spots Michael, but then there's another Michael. There's a bunch of Michaels, but it's just a bunch of idiot pranksters. And uh, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, that I, I really didn't like the pranksters thing. I'm sure you're gonna say the same thing, Charlie. But uh-huh. I really didn't like it, and it, it's just like another thing. Like you felt like somebody like was watching this. You know what? There, there, there's been 35 seconds without some sort of Michael attack. We got to get something <laughs> else in here. It doesn't make sense to do another dream sequence. What can we do? You know, it's like you could have let one go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's true. And then it, it, it kind of adds insult to injury. We're like, oh, it's just the kids. And then you see one second later. No, actually, Michael was right there. Yeah, again, and one too. of them was also was, Michael too. Yeah. One of them, maybe one that we didn't see. Right. Until yeah. that last shot. So it's like. They wanted to have their cake and eat it too. And also, I, unlike in Scream, for example, when they get to the point where other people are like, uh, or in like Scream 2, where other people are wearing the masks and running around, I feel like there's this hysteria and it became part of the pop culture because it's recent. In this, I don't know, we're, we're kids every Halloween since then in going around Field, with yeah. those Myers masks in Haddonfield. I don't know. It feels like they yeah. wouldn't know that this new stuff is just happening and it would have been old news. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now they get to the police station where off camera, (laughs) Michael has just killed everybody. The police station is, is a wasteland of, of death. Everyone is just dead. And, and everything's overturned. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a tornado. (laughs) Tornado hit the place. And this all happened off camera. Why? Oh my goodness! Yeah. This is a weird decision, and it's it's either like I don't understand because if they had shots of Michael fighting all these cops and killing them, you'd think that they'd yeah. want to use them. So like, why cut it? Why cut that? You know, cut the fake Michael Myers from the scene that just pr- preceded it. It's uh just weird stuff. It and makes it, no sense. If they purposely said let's have it happen off camera, it's like wow. Why? Like maybe they couldn't afford to film it, I guess, Charlie? Yes. That's what I say. <laughs> all budget savings. You saved yourself a ton of angles on, yeah. on all those killings, people getting thrown Special through effects, yeah. You know, tables and blood and all that stuff. I think it's a hundred percent 
uh, budget. I don't think it was filmed. I think any of these movies from the 80s, if you filmed the killing or you filmed the car flipping over, you showed it as much as you could. Yeah, yeah. What what I would have liked, though, is that if they had some sort of setup, like someone on the radio saying, like, we got the the girl, we're bringing her to the station. And then it was like, like and that, yeah. then he went there. It's just, like, it's just some connection, because why would he even go there? Like, you know, he's yeah, all over what, the place. He's at the me. he's at the uh, power station. You know, yeah. he, then then he's with like, when did he kill the cops? Like after it's like, he, he for him, the... the town is like theater in the round. <laughs> and he, he, he just he just wants to stage these things all around that are making this moment that frightens the niece. And that's a little bit in keeping. Like, Michael's always had a playful side, dating back to the first Halloween where he's, like, wearing the ghost, uh, you know, sheet over his head and pretending that's to be good. the girl's yeah. boyfriend. So, But now it's getting really extravagant. <laughs> just, yeah. I'll just kill the entire police force just, just for sport, just, you know, just to make it a little more exciting. Uh, but, set a mood, you know. It's, like, w- the first time we watched it, we're like, wait, what? What what just happened? The whole police station is is been killed? Like they yeah, don't it, they don't even dwell on it very like the characters barely talk about it. He's not even sad. He's all his coworkers though. Yeah. Oh my god. They what they could have done is they could have done it over the phone or something. At the very bargain yeah. basement way, you call up your station like, "Hey, sh- <sighs> chief, everything's good here." Wait. Oh my god. Ah! Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. So now the militia arrives as they're leaving the pl- as the the main characters are leaving the station. The sheriff tries to quell the mob, refusing to give out details. <laughs> but Loomis it steps in, gives get, fills in all the blanks for them, and uh, explains <laughs> Michael Myers on the loose. And um and 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 our great militia is like, all right, we're getting to work. Um, he's it- pro mob. He's pro angry mob. It's yeah, great. I love that. He he. This is like a sophisticated uh, British, um, you know, <laughs> learned <psychiatrist>. doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these drunken ho- hillbillies. Those is, are his people. Like, yeah. There are guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, Donald Pleasance. What a performance. And just Loomis. What a character. I love it. Oh, I love it. Uh, it it's it's fantastic. so great. Every time he's on screen, it's really fun. Yeah. Is the head of the militia a poor man's M. Emmett Walsh type guy to you? <laughs> yeah, he kind of is, yeah. Okay, cool. The cop who was guarding Jamie's house hops into the car to go to the station. Michael's in the back seat. Well, what happens there? Does the guy get killed? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll get to it. I don't, but anyway, meanwhile. No, not, he no, doesn't. He go, he not, not then. Not then. So wait, what's Michael doing in the back seat? Just taking a ride? It's a ride. Yeah. <laughs> Michael <laughs> is everywhere. I know we've already gone over it, but it's it's a little infuriating at times. It's like, wait, he was just what seems to be at least two or three miles away, and he's on foot. But anyway, we'll let it go. Rachel's parents get home, and they're alarmed because there's nobody there. The militia thinks they see Michael. So naturally, they they just shoot at him dozens and dozens of times, <laughs> and and then they realize they've shot poor Tim Hollister, <laughs> who uh, we don't see. We don't. I, know, I wish I wish he had established <laughs> Tim Hollister for just one second. I know. <laughs> you don't even see him after they kill him. I know. <laughs> they just talk about it. That's funny. Oh, that gazebo is like all exploding. The bushes explode. Show. <laughs> all you need to do is at the bar, you see like, oh, there goes Tim. He must be drunk again. Like, it takes like one second to establish something. I know. Yeah. Tim Hollister. Uh, and yet, nice. and yet, like, against all odds, Tim Hollister is a, a name that I continue to reference to this day. We yeah, this, the specificity him. of it is great. There's if it had just been, oh, it. that was an innocent guy. Yeah. You wouldn't remember it. I never, I'll never forget Tim Hollister, and there's no actor played him. He doesn't exist. Anyway, <laughs> meanwhile, by a fire, Brady and the sheriff's daughter are getting intimate, and um, but then uh, they're interrupted when when the sheriff comes home with Loomis and Rachel and Jamie. They they quickly get dressed, and uh, sheriff comes in. He's all business, but uh, he does manage to say, uh, "Hey, if I catch you touching my daughter, I'm going to shoot you," uh, which is uh cliche upon cliche but 
what more can you ask for? Um, and uh, <laughs> the sheriff's daughter is still like her version of getting dressed because her dad's here is putting back on just the shirt over nothing. The shirt that says "Police do it by the book" yeah. over over nothing. She's like, well, I gotta get <laughs> get back to yeah. being just just really provocative looking as opposed to completely naked is is like <laughs> an improvement for her. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's hilarious. So yeah. Rachel and the sheriff's daughter have a little run in in the kitchen. Wise up to what men want, Rachel, or Brady won't be the first man you lose to another woman. And Rachel pours coffee Ouch. coffee on the sheriff's daughter. Frankly, mm. it's like be mad at Brady, Rachel. Don't be mad at this this girl, Charlie. Almost some uh, death stalker, death stalk type type drama there. Yeah, you know, like, like oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. When when they're fighting about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> womanly can't. advice yes. and very like specific yeah. and like super emotional. It's good stuff. I love it. All right, so um, but eventually the sheriff's daughter does put on like a button-down shirt, which we're <laughs> I'm really dwelling on this a bit much, but um, she comes out with some coffee for the deputy guy who's on duty guarding the door. She lights a candle. And reveals that the deputy is in fact, in fact dead, and Michael Myers is there, and he rams a shotgun through her stomach. Uh, Rachel, who's been manning the radio, gets word that the Stadies are on the way. Charlie, great news! And uh, oh yes, she goes to tell the deputy, but sees he's not there. Then she sees he's dead, and so is the sheriff's daughter. So she runs up to see Jamie isn't in bed. Oh no, she bumps into Brady, and Brady's like. Who cares about the little girl? Let's just get out. Let's just get out of here, Charlie. <laughs> They're all in the same house. They might as well be in different states. <laughs> for how it feels. It's, yeah, I know. It's, the house is Brady's not in, that big. <laughs> Brady's in the attic. He's in the attic for like a long time. We never see him. The girl is in there making coffee, and she can't hear an officer getting killed like 11 feet away from her. And at this point, unless I'm wrong, right, guys? Loomis... And the dad are like, I'm out of here. I gotta go catch. I'm gonna go catch Michael. <laughs> first, first yeah. Loomis says that, and his whole thing is he knows Michael's gonna go after the girl who's in this house. <laughs> then the, the sheriff, who's defending his daughter and this and these two other minor girls who are the you know the girl who's the target, he says, I don't want these hillbillies going around my town. I'm out of here too. So they leave the <laughs> one cop there. Yeah, yeah, very, very foolish. Very foolish. So um, Brady that Brady can't get out the front door because it's locked or something. From oh, the this inside. is one of our favorite quotes, Tom. <laughs> yeah, so, so he shoots at it several times, but turns out it's metal. And he's like, I can't, I can't shoot through the lock because it's metal. And, and Rachel says what the rest of us are thinking. She says, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and you actually see the lock get blown through, I think. And there's like yeah. a hole there. It's like your giant shotgun will will beat the, the, the little metal lock. I'm telling you, Brady, keep shooting. Tom? I don't. It makes no sense. They give up so easily. Like, well, <laughs> what there's is no that use. Hole is sort of slightly still in place. I can't, I can't no do use. it. It's metal. Trapped. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, and no one knows what it means. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great moment. Jamie appears at the top of the stairs. Um, Brady tries to fight Michael, but no luck. Michael cr- crushes his head and neck. Uh, Jamie and Rachel seem to barricade themselves in the attic, but then Michael just walks in. But Charlie, did you have a point for you before that? Um. Oh, I was I was doing a Michael Myers face. Oh, crush, okay. You were with my hand. <laughs> It's unique. It's unique. Michael doesn't really try to find a knife in this movie. He just says, "I want to crush your your <laughs> face like with my very strong hand." That would yeah. require a lot of strength to just push your <laughs> fingers through a person's yeah, skull. It's much it's not much of a slasher this picture. It's 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 a crusher. Uh, he just <laughs> he crusher, just yeah. he's like just let me use my fingers to Those effects are kind of good though. They're pretty gross. So, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Michael comes into the attic after uh, Jamie and Rachel. They climb out the window, um, and they end up falling off the roof. Um, and, uh, oh. <laughs> she gets tied. The little girl gets tied she by, gets like, tied the, to a the, cable or something. The cable. Yeah. Not even, like, a, like, 
cable that would be used for oh rock climbing. It's just like the cable that brings your TV into the house. Yes. A little loop around her arms, and then she. I totally thought off. Michael was gonna pull her back up to the roof. That would have been more dramatic and cool. But she just kind of falls, and then she yeah. runs up to 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 Rachel on the ground and has a heart wrenching another one of your actorly child actorly moments where she's like Rachel no don't die <laughs> okay uh, note please let's all note Rachel unconscious on the lawn right everybody at this moment okay so then Loomis shows up and he explain she explains that everyone's dead and uh, he said the logical thing that he says is could you Direct us to the the schoolhouse. We'll be safe there, <laughs> says Lo- Loomis. Much like we can't get through here, it's metal. It's like, wait, why? Like, why do you want to go to the schoolhouse, Doctor Charlie? And it, it's much like in Night of the Demon. The next logical step would be go to Herb's <laughs> General Store. <laughs> exactly. So they arrive. Loomis shoots uh, through the lock on the door. They set off an alarm. I thought there was no power, you know, so you'd think the alarm wouldn't work, but let's not, uh, uh, you know, worry about that too much. Um, this is a good good moment right here, Tom. Listen to this. Loomis says, we'll, we'll hear the sirens soon. And she says, then we'll be safe? Yes. You don't believe that, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just, it's really that, that, wild. It, it's, it's good. It's confusing. I don't know if they thought it was funny, and it is funny. It's all that stuff all at once. I know. Uh, so many questions. We all have so many questions about what, what went into that little back and forth, but but it's good. Oh, yeah. it, you don't see it in yeah. a lot you of could, movies. You could have had Loomis and, and the little girl like on a road trip. It would have been great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just oh. been, I mean, that's basically what Halloween 5 is. It's just a lot of, <laughs> the two of yelling. Them. But... <laughs> All right, Myers Great. is already at the school somehow, which is annoying. He was on the roof. He was just on the roof. Now he's already in the school before they got there. He How didn't did even he get... look anywhere. Yeah, he why didn't would he shoot go to the, the locks? How do you get in? Anyway, um, he gets Loomis. Poor Jamie's alone and terrified. She falls down the stairs, running away from Michael. She sprays him with a fire extinguisher. The militia's driving by. They notice the school alarm. And then Rachel comes out of the school carrying Jamie. How did Rachel get there? She's unconscious on the lawn, Tom. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I th- there was some sort of shot that she was sort of waking up. That's the best. It was very subtle. Very subtle. Like We never see her go in. We never see her pick up Jamie. She's just suddenly, she's carrying Jamie out of the school. Oh, my all God. Be- all because of the fire extinguisher. That was what did it. That that basically she fired that. That made Myers go no, <laughs> flee flee from being so close to Jamie and letting Rachel save the day. <laughs> Rachel, who wasn't even there, somehow manages to save the day. It's it's that it's is beautiful. impressive. So, so the militia grabs Rachel and Jamie, and they decide they got to get out of town. Let the state police de- <laughs> deal with Myers. Um, <laughs> and they they're driving out of town. They pass some state police cars, and a trooper directs them to like a check-in station down the way. But turns out Michael, um, um, much like uh, a preceding, you know, uh, before Robert De Niro did it in Cape Fear, turns out Michael was was kind of under the truck the whole time. But we never see quite how how he was under the truck. Impossible. No. There's no that's, way that's... that he could have gotten to the truck from the moment the fire extinguisher happened to them leaving. No. <laughs> All we see is Michael climbing onto the truck as it's driving. And uh, just yeah. <laughs> so many questions. And if he, it, you know, it's one of those things. He can dispatch, you know, an, an entire police station full of, of armed officers. Like, why, why would he go to this trouble to, like, sneak under a truck <laughs> It's like, why not you know, just, you just cr- take people out? Like, just crush just, the whole just truck. Attack them. <laughs> just crush it and everyone in it. Why didn't he just do that while it was moving? <laughs> he's a he's a sucker for the drama. It's the moment. He does. He loves yeah. the drama. He wants to make an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he kills all the guys, or at least gets all the guys from the back of the truck thrown off. And then he kills Earl, who's driving. Um, so, so Rachel, seeing that Earl's possibly dead finish kind of finishes him off 
<laughs> like pushing him, <laughs> yeah. pushing him out of like, the car. I, I could use some space here, guy. Uh, <laughs> you get out of there. Make a decision. So Michael, Michael falls off the truck. He stands up. Rachel drives into him. He goes falling down the hill. The truck uh, goes down the hill too, out of control, but then comes to a gentle stop. Uh, the police somehow know that this has all been happening, and they all arrive. <laughs> I, who knows why? And then um, Jamie goes up and touches Michael's hand, thereby getting his evil, I guess. And then he's shot by multiple machine guns, and he falls into a sinkhole. Uh, I, yeah. I needed uh, some dumbed down for me uh, when she touched the hand. Because first I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, is there some weird mark on his hand or something I'm supposed to notice? And then there's no reaction in her eyes that evil transferred to her and there's no sound i i don't know i just thought yeah what's the big deal i mean she already had a a, a, a mental tie with him the fact that she touched the, the top of his hand was the the main thing that made evil take over her entire body yeah that's all it takes charlie <laughs> but that's what <laughs> the they're trying to tell us happening. though right it is what they're trying to tell us right that, yeah, but I they didn't so. need to. I mean, in- just the traumatic event could have been enough to set her off, though. You know, just well, what she's been. The through. brain connection is enough. Yeah. from the first moment of the movie, he could have been sending her signals like, "Join me." <laughs> 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 All right, so then we get home. Um, Rachel and Jamie get home. Loomis comes in to assess the damage. Michael Myers is in hell, uh, buried where he belongs. Loomis somehow. Yes, Charlie. Okay, so get that buried. Comment on that. That sinkhole is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, pretty much, right? It it looks like an open grave. Yeah. But it's yeah. not in a graveyard. It's on the side of the road and not far from the road. It's just like this ridiculous yeah. it like a trap to catch a tiger that you would have in the jungle. <laughs> yeah. That's just that's just there. In part five we see that they like explode it yeah. too. Which doesn't it's, happen it's in part a, they four. They describe though. it as a as a mine. Yeah. It, oh, they do. It, it's right on yeah, a. They do. It's right next to a river, though, too, which is an easy way for Michael to get away, which he does. But um, the mom yeah. the mom's gonna take Jamie upstairs for a bath. But Jamie, possessed by the evil, after touching her uncle, um, she puts on the uh, she's in the iconic costume and and she stabs her mom. And the movie ends with Loomis at the bottom of the oh. stairs screaming, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and he wants to shoot Jamie. He immediately pulls out his gun <laughs> to shoot her. The sheriff stops him, but they're all at the bottom of the stairs in like the most dramatic poses and just like, yeah. oh, drama. That's a great shot. Because <laughs> yeah. then the sheriff, sheriff like takes the gun and he's like, well, should I shoot her maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know what to do. They... I would love a uh. still of that. Of that picture, of the like, <laughs> it's Rachel Loomis and the sheriff. I'm pretty sure that maybe the father too at the bottom of the stairs, and they're just like, no. <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh, it's absolutely completely beyond preposterous that Loomis, who saw at the end of part one, Myers go out of a window yep. with many bullets in him that would have killed him, <laughs> to think that if he gets shot with many bullets and falls similarly. He's in hell. I know. It's over. <laughs> we are not going to recover the body. We're just going to assume this time the same thing <laughs> happened. Yeah, and that's unluminous. Like that's so inconsistent. He 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 could have just said, you know, he could have said the body. He yeah. could have said, hope you know, I hopefully we're safe now or something. He you know, come on, that that was unnecessary for him to say that. But uh, Halloween four. I mean, look, when you hear that you're watching part four of a series, your expectations are pretty low, I would assume. Mo- you know, and most people, you know, deride sequels uh, in general. You know, especially when you get w- way deep into them. So, uh, keeping that in mind, it's it's a pleasant uh, it's a pleasant ninety minutes. It goes by pretty fast. It's got some memorable moments. And uh, even though they overdo it on the stylized nighttime and the relentless, um, relentlessly consistent vibe, it's a bit too much, yes. But I kind of like hanging out there, you know? I, 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 I like hanging out in that town with these people. So, uh, And the more I watch it, it's on AMC a lot. And when it's on, I'm just like, yeah, 
this is Halloween four is on, and I'm I'm surprisingly happy. Tom, your thoughts? Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there's nothing really bad about it. Like it's it's perfectly functional, and it depends what, you know what your frame of reference is. But I mean, you know, we we've obviously seen a lot worse, a lot of movies that are harder to watch, harder to endure. Like this is this isn't going to be like. Uh, a classic for all time but in the midst of a marathon in particular it's a nice uh change of pace you know it's clean you know it's not it's not too dark it's not boring it it's it doesn't give us maybe as much of the fun moments as we would want um but you know it's well shot it's well edited you know the the sound is good like all those kind of things you kind of take for granted but if you watch a lot of movies that don't have them yeah, you, you miss it. When <laughs> yeah. you, when our you standards, our standards go so <laughs> low that this movie, which is you know bad in many ways and inconsistent and unprofessional, it feels like this great breath of fresh air for us, uh, Charlie. Yeah. yeah, and it's low budget enough to have really um, ham fisted uh, <laughs> backstory given to you, which I I often like, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like the scene going to the power station. It was like, if you're a kid and you make a movie, you think you might have to explain everything. Yeah. Like, well, the lights will go out. Well, we got to show this. And they're not just going off in the one house. Well, can we have him go and take out the power for the whole town? And I like that. Um, and yes, it's it's easy to watch. It doesn't dwell in any one spot too long, um, which makes it feel fast. It's also ridiculous that it's jumping around so many Places like to the schoolhouse, for example, right. or with the same characters, like with the same character, yeah, places I mean, it, it at would, once, seemingly. You would have thought that the showdown would happen at Jamie's house or the sheriff's house. They would have <laughs> stayed there, and then that would have been it, like the first one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, interesting thing, like you were saying, with part five showing more about the exploding of the Myers body in the hole and the river. It's as if they forgot the lesson that they should have learned before that people like Michael Myers being the killer, because at the end of this one, they're setting it up that the little girl is the killer. Now yeah. she's like the new killer and like Michael's dead. So between this is what I'm imagining. And I between don't research and this, five, yeah. nor, nor, do, nor do I research theater in the round or really know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like they thought people don't want the little girl to be the killer. Let's film a little extra. So they're like, here's what you didn't see. Is that there's a little <laughs> tunnel that he could crawl out of. And then he floats downstream like a like a baby turtle. Kind of like, uh, <laughs> and then he picks up the net. But it's, it's as if they rethought it. And they were like, you know what? Halloween 3 didn't have Myers. No one liked that. We're bringing him back again for 5. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah. He, they were left with something there because they... You know, either they were going to have tag team killers with the girl and Myers, or they were going to try to, yeah, try to re, try to fix the girl. But either way, I think that's interesting because I watched it on AMC today, and I watched part five, the beginning, right after, mm-hmm. and uh, that made me think about that again. I actually forgot the two movies mixed up in my head. Uh, I had that mixed up in my head a couple of days ago. I was like, oh, okay, that that part is in part five, Tom. Isn't isn't there a similar thing in in, in uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four? Like at the end, there's there's like a transference of evil thing, but then in five, it doesn't really keep yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. It's the same thing where they were like, "Well, we don't want someone else to get his evil. We just want the same same looking Jason going around." Yeah. What what I like about this also is that it it kind of stick pretty. It, it pretty much sticks to the formula. The formula being it's Halloween night and the guy is killing people in a small town. You know, it doesn't get, it doesn't go try to get too big or, uh, or, or, or too out there in a way that like, mm-hmm. I barely remember part six. Um, but I feel like they, they try to do too much with like the uh, satanic cults and, uh, in the backstory where this is just like, all right, it's just, it's just happening again. I like this scenario yeah. and I don't mind watching it again. Likewise with the Friday the 13th movies. Part 4 is superb because it's exactly what mm-hmm. you expect from the Friday the 13th movies. And when they start to get, you know, by the time they make Jason Takes Manhattan, they're like, oh, we need to shake things up and do something different. And it's like, no, you don't. Just do, keep yeah, making, 
keep making essentially the same movie every year, and I will I will happily watch <laughs> each one of them. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with it. That, <laughs> so yeah, that's um, what they that's what they did with Saw, right? That worked for Saw for a long time. I haven't seen any of them. I never saw one of them, but that's what they did. I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm not an expert in that either. But I one can assume. Yeah, d- like don't or, or you know don't do a departure. Just keep on you know Friday the Thirteenth. Keep on having Jason kill people in the woods, and Halloween. Keep on having Michael kill people in the neighborhood. That that's all we want. And uh, you know I hate it's so weird how Jason gets so buff as the the series progresses. You know, and uh, Michael yeah. Michael gets yeah I know he was in the explosion, so he's like all like uh, def- a little deformed, and it seems like it gets worse and worse with each movie. But I like it the best in the first movies where he's just a guy. When his mask is off, it's like he's just a guy, and that's scarier, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and yeah. Uh, it's it's late '80s, and we talked about it a bit. It's uh, they're they, you know, it's too much of the stylized nighttime and the and the lights and um and 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 the gloss. There's some of that '80 late '80s gloss, but there's not enough that it ruins the movie. There's a lot. There's others that are way glossier, and when it goes in the '90s, it's just painfully glossy. But you can see it there. You can see it there, and it you know it has the thing that sequels have in that they they try a little too hard. You know, with the explosions, especially, it's like uh, unnecessary. But they they just felt the need, and obviously with action being bigger in that time of the year, Charlie. Yes. Oh, when the tow truck thing happened, it was clear that they were like, well, for not that much money. We could do an explosion by this in this old like uh, desert cafe thing, and they, <laughs> they, they were Illinois. able to pull it off. So it, w- Michael Myers, he doesn't even really want to run over Loomis. There, it's just like it just happens, and uh, it, it was for production value, which is okay because you think about the time and everything of uh, selling it to the home video market and making it look big. But um, I was just gonna say really quickly, sometimes in these sequels you sense that they're pandering to the horror fans and and that they're like, Oh, horror fans really want to see extra gore. And they really want to see, sometimes they lay it on too thick for me, but they didn't mm-hmm. in this movie. It's not too much, not too much. No, not too much, but it can happen in, in, in a lot of different movies and series, or maybe even in some of the reboots where like, they're, they're like, this is what they want. So they show you it more than you thought you would have ever could, would ever see. Yeah, like they want it. That's, you know. Yeah, outdo themselves. That's what I was saying. Like that, you could tell. Like someone was like, "Okay, it's been five minutes. We need a scare." Yeah, and like that, I, I don't like it when scripts are like that. You know, when they're so consciously like timing it out that way. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, that's Halloween four. Um. And uh, it, you know, when it's on American Movie Classics, I recommend just sit back. Don't have to watch the whole thing. Just enjoy a few moments in that in that world, and just be glad that Donald Pleasance agreed to to be in it because he's amazing. <laughs> he's truly amazing. Um, next month we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about Slingshot Cops, Tom. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, for Tom and Charlie, this is Farley saying, "Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night." <laughs>